yeah, there have been some really good stuff uh, that I've really enjoyed on Ballistic Radio. Um, uh, Steve Fisher, um, uh, April, William April, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Chuck Haggard, Pat Rogers. Um, yeah, there's some really good people on there. Oh, it was huge. I mean, his his interviews with uh, Frank Proctor were great. All the ones that Steve has done. Steve's low light one is 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 uh, I, I've listened to that a couple of times. Um, yeah, April, uh, and I can I cannot remember the guy's name, but he works with uh, Gibbons at Rangemaster, and actually he has some high doctorate in in learning and stress and psychology and stuff like that where they get into uh, there is no difference in stress stress is stress your body doesn't know if it's a dude coming at you or if you just run if you're if you're you know running sprints and blah 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 they talked about myelination um, of skills and you know neural pathways super super interesting um, who else do I really dig on there yeah you know yeah, yeah. good stuff man good stuff. good stuff good stuff and then with uh, Nick it's just it's just fun to hear some of their shows on uh, practical uh, practically tactical. Practically tactical. I was gonna say uh, uh, Casey's show, but I don't think he's doing it anymore. Casey, I think it's been a oh. while. Oh. Yeah, it's oh, been yeah. a while since he. I get them mixed up. Mm. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, with Nick's show, that's uh, sometimes just that's just kind of fun to listen to. They're not there. It's uh, it's. It's kind of like when I was on, uh, not not it's not that it's the same type of show, but it's uh, the the same feel that it's it, it doesn't need to be that serious, and it can it can be kind of silly at times. Well, it as, is as opposed to us. They do a great job of um, not spreading bad in information, even though that can be fun. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't get lazy about it. You know, the yeah. information. Is always good, and and that is a um, I think that comes from guest selection. Yeah. Right. Um, they have some fun with things um, over there. Uh, they're not all mean and nasty like we all are. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. Uh, but yeah, I, I think uh, you know, practically tactical. Not saying anything about you know them, but they're they're the gateway. To get mm -hmm, yeah. to more serious content and training. Not saying with the, the their content. Not saying that their training is not serious. It absolutely is. I mean, the stuff that they're doing with listener classes and ARs and all the stuff they're doing at Alliance with Fisher with Trek at MDFI. Um, the guests that they have had on from a variety of things, whether it be um, you know Fish. Mike Lamb, uh, Freddie Asuna from Greenside, yeah. uh, training the tra the tracking aspect of it. He's had a he's had a really he's done a great job with the variety of things. Uh, yeah. there's Cecil Birch, another big fan of Cecil Birch. You know, he's a jujitsu guy. He's he's a good friend of um, uh, Douglas. You know, part of the whole Shivworks gang. Um, so yeah, I'm impressed with him. I'm not allowed to be on there anymore because they got too many damn people on the panel. So, uh -oh. yeah. But. <laughs> yeah, with Nick's show was the first one I was on, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And then I realized, well, we have people. Why don't we do? Why can't we do that? And then we did. And then, it, yeah, that's kind of blossomed a little bit. We we seem to improve with everyone except for this one. Um, and then I <laughs> then I went on uh, We Like Shooting and. It, it was nice to, to just kind of sit back and relax and see everyone else do all the work, and I just talk when they want me to talk or if I have something to say, but it, it was that rather was pleasant. That was interesting, man. I made mean, about halfway through that thing, and um, with all due respect to those guys, I've never listened to their podcast before you got on there. You know yeah. what I mean? It was kind of like fun first, information second, where we're the opposite. Yeah. I don't think we have any fun. <laughs> Yeah, we we never have any laughter or yeah, jokes. Nothing like that. No. Yeah, nothing like that. Oh, nothing like that. Maybe someday. Well, yeah. in the next two weeks. Maybe. <laughs> Why in the next two weeks? Yeah. Oh, I know because I won't be around. Yeah, I won't be around. <laughs> Don't get on it. Oh my God! Seriously. <laughs> what? I, I'm going to be working for the that other agency for long periods of time and loving it and getting a great tan. 
Oh, no. You're doing uh, Baywatch? Yes, I'll be wearing the red bathing suit. <laughs> nice. Oh my god, you can make dad jokes wow. even worse with yes. your own soundboard. It's oh. interesting because none of the other features of that work. Oh my god. Wow. Steve is now truly impressed. I can tell. I'm going to like pull something in my face from cringing so hard. Oh my yeah. lord. Hard. <laughs> yeah. Well, should we call it? I hear that Steve's already yawning and he's a wuss. That's the sound of death. Oh, sorry. Mm. <laughs> How long has this been going? Did I just catch it at the tail end? No, uh, we fairly we well we started at fifteen twenty thirty minutes after the yeah. other podcast. No, actually we talked in that other podcast after we turned off the cameras for a little yeah. while. Yeah. Um. So things to come: uh, Freddie Asuna and Moose Marshall and Roland, and I think there was one other. They're going to be doing a show based on tracking or focused on tracking soon. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be a sit rep. Dude, um, that's that 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 that's workshop a good one. I did. Yeah. That that four hour workshop I did with Freddie when he was out here, yeah. man. It was um Yeah, dude. It was it was awesome. It was awesome. Then we also have uh Dr. Gary Roberts is on. He called me today and he he he's gonna be on at some point. I don't know if he's gonna be a mod I'm it's gonna be it's gonna have to be a sit rep. That's all there is to it. That's gonna be fun to have him. He's going to uh Explain the whys as to why 9 versus 45 versus 40. Why carbines over pistols? Why shotguns are dumb? Uh, if you can get CJ LaPree on for that tracking one, that would be a good one. Who is that? Uh, CJ LaPree. Oh, All that name that. rings a bell. I don't know if you met him. He was at a uh, um, trying to think where you would have ran into him. He was at shop show, ran around a bunch of the same places we were. Um, down in Arizona, he did that for a while. Maybe he still does with his job. So should uh, you get uh, Yancey in on that? Him and, Yancey, him and Yancey were actually the guys who I took a intro to tracking through. Um, at an LMS Defense Customer Appreciation Weekend. I'm going to say 2011. Uh, CJ trained through the, I guess, godfather of tracking, uh, David Scott Donaldson. And basically that's a quick way to figure out if somebody knows what they're talking about is does their tracking lineage trace back to David Scott Donaldson um, or the Rhodesian SAS Cellus Scouts line. And yeah. you can quickly figure out these guys who know what they're talking about, they all trace back there because those guys were the experts and still are. Um, but that's why I uh, took an intro through, and Yancey was there, and CJ was there, and they, they both talked about it. Um, on a uh, other note, Moose... Uh, I think uh, about four months ago, I sent him a class outline for something I was supposed to teach uh, that was kind of outside my subject matter uh, knowledge lane, and he tore it up pretty good, and uh, was very helpful, and it was definitely in his frame of reference of tracking and law enforcement and pushing that into a, a manner that you can present it to law enforcement. So great asset, even though he looks like a 12-year-old and he's... Yeah. Definitely not 12. So, and it's cool what you just mentioned about uh, lineage because Scott's been talking about that as well with Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, Freddie Freddie talked a lot about that. I think he's actually worked with the gentleman because they're they're both out in Tucson. So, so they've worked together. DJ. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. It's very interesting. Uh, yeah. Who all is connected? He, uh, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. It's it's amazing stuff. You guys would, I mean, it's unbelievable how much you learn by looking at dirt and a footprint. Hmm. 
And again, we were talking before about uh, in the new, in the uh, fitness and nutrition one and stuff about how the body works, you know, and that is represented in in a, in a track, in a foot track, whether the guy was walking, whether he was running, which direction he went, how to determine which direction he went, how old it is, um, and that's the main thing that sets Freddie apart. Is there's there's a couple of things that I won't go through all that, but his main thing that sets his um, philosophy, technique, whatever uh, method apart is the age of the track and determining the age of it, and the things he goes through to um, for you to determine uh, whether or not that is a valid track and consistent with all the other tracks is his age that sets him apart, and it was fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Cool. I talked to uh, Moose over at uh, Pat's events, and uh, yeah, we're we're trying to nail down exactly when we can get that show going. Yeah, sounds like it'll be good. Yeah, maybe yeah. Uh, maybe reaching out to Yancey too, just for another. I don't panel. know if if no? we do that. No, I'm uh, he and Roland. Oh. They're just going to tell stories about each other. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, no that, that sounds good. Matter of fact, I've been I'm actually wanting to get Yancey on because he has some unique experiences that would be really cool to talk about. Then you get him to do his accents for based on what he's talking about, and it's a riot. Oh, that would be even better. He taught or whatever at this tracking class in a Rhodesian accent or a South African accent. I can't remember the whole time. It was an absolute riot. You had a hard oh, time cool. not laughing. But no, that's good. The, the clip was back, you know, it ruins your ability to walk anymore. Because you go for a walk with your head in the ground. Mm -hmm. Ooh, what am I following? Who else is here? What you know, can I take a guess? And you know, I, I I'm very intrigued by what Freddie's doing with the timeline because that that's always the big thing is figuring out how Far behind somebody I am, but I have yeah. actually used it. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Matt. Sorry, I have actually used some of the tracking stuff at work, and uh, you know, from an actual like we're trying to find where they went when they fled the crime scene to figure out how it's now a dead guy on the interstate ended up here from where, and track him back and using predictable human behavior, the path of least resistance finding cutoff fields, and all right, we got a track here and a body here, let's find where he went, and next thing you know, you can develop a direction of travel, and it's an awesome skill just for that aspect, never mind the fun aspect, so. It's so, a little yeah. bit easier in the, uh, in the suburbs, you just follow the trail of Starbucks receipts, mm. they got time stamps on them, so it's a little bit <laughs> easier out here. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so, <laughs> that was funny. Uh, <laughs> One of the things that Freddie said that with the time stuff, not only do, do you determine um, if this is a valid track on uh, what on uh, the person you're tracking, is that for any, um, it's for safety purposes as well, right? So in the less dire situation, if you're trying to track a missing child that has wandered off and things of that nature, and you're in your you nose in their down. bed, <laughs> yeah, there you go. it's typically where I find them. Yeah, but he was saying like you know they were looking for one kid and um, you know they were the the other part of the group was walking right back and forth because they were just had their heads in the, and their eyes in the ground just walking past the kid. Where it gets more dangerous is if you're tracking you know um, somebody that could be very dangerous and you're not reading the time of the track, your head may be in the ground and the dude's right there. And the dude's right there, so that could be a you know a safety issue. So it's fascinating. He's coming out here. Uh, F3 is um, sponsoring, promoting him. I think he's coming out here in July. I I can't wait for that class, man. Cool. Well, I guess I will end it now. All right. So Steve can get his beauty sleep, and it's pretty late for you too. Yeah, it's about two thirty. That's yeah. right. My first my first meeting's at eleven, so I'll be all right. <laughs> Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, that was Modcast 63. For a, a thrown-together Modcast, that had some pretty good stuff. Yeah. That, was, that was a good conversation, except for Matt. 
Levi. That's tough. I'm, I'm yeah. always good. He didn't what even was shave, that? Didn't even shave for Modcast. He didn't even shave for Modcast. What the hell? <sighs> so he you said, can find. Yeah. Oh, go he ahead. He said good things about the competition Cipher app, so he's good to go. Okay. Yeah, that's true. That's right. Um, you can find us at primaryandsecondary.com. dot com. We have. 736 groups on Facebook right now. <laughs> um, if you go to primaryandsecondary.com slash resources, you'll see a majority of everything that we have to offer. We do have podcasts. We are on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Google. Yeah. Be sure to like, be sure to share, be sure to subscribe. Spread the word. We sure appreciate it. Thanks for listening. <laughs>